of Thieves is the prequel to Army of the Dead released earlier this year. It's already being turned into a cinematic universe for Netflix, so now we get things like this. Anyway, it's directed by and starring Matthias Swigoffer, and written by Shea Hatton, a writer for Army of the Dead and John Wick Chapter 3. Earlier I made a video on the original in a double feature with Wrath of Man, a video which literally nobody saw, most likely because of the confusing title that I only changed recently. I was more supportive of that movie than most, although there are times when I even debate with myself if my 4 star rating was a little too high. Right now I'm thinking probably not. Either way, I'm not huge on how Netflix is treating this as a cinematic universe before they even knew how people would react to the first one, which is how we got one so soon. But I also realized that it's an interesting world full of lore that actually has potential to be expanded upon. And Army of Thieves helps to expand it just a little, even if it's probably not anyone's first choice of what people needed to expand upon in this world. The poster for this reads, More safes, less zombies. And that's pretty much what you get here. This takes place in the beginning of the zombie outbreak, but on the other side of the world where there are no zombies. Either way, it's surprising to put on the continuation of a gory zombie movie and have the rating appear in the corner simply saying, Language. They try to put in a few zombies through news footage and dream sequences, but it all just feels kinda shoehorned in and has nothing to do with the actual story or characters. They try to tie it in by having someone literally say that the main character's zombie dreams are his insecurities manifesting themselves. So much for subtlety. But I don't really buy it, especially since I don't remember it ever paying off in the end. Oh, and they also try to appeal to fans of the first movie's gore with a scene where a character gets into a fight with some bank guards and literally every blow causes blood to fly, because apparently bank guards are very fragile. Oh no, something lightly hit my face. Anyway, this is pretty late into the review, but plot synopsis. It focuses on how Swigol for his safe cracker character got into the crime business. In the beginning, he makes safe cracking tutorials on YouTube that nobody sees, and somebody leaves a comment with an address for him to go to. It turns out to be a test to see if he's worthy of joining an international criminal gang on a trip across Europe to rob three major safes that are about to be decommissioned. The moral of the story is always listen to shady people on the internet. So yeah, this is kind of your average heist movie, although it does have a few good plot turns. It doesn't have the zombies, which sucks because the zombies were the best part of the original, but it's a stylish heist movie. While it doesn't have anything like that Viva Las Vegas scene from the original, this isn't the worst attempt at following Snyder's style. I could see why people may think it's better than the original. While I had more fun with Army of the Dead, this does, I guess, fix some of the problems it had with tone. One of the complaints I've heard a lot about the first is that it wants to be fun but the story is depressing, something I probably should have noticed and mentioned in my video on it. Well, this one has an upbeat tone and an ending that actually matches it. Also, none of that, the president says he thinks it would be cool to nuke Vegas on the 4th of July, crap. But, like I said, it's sorely missing the zombies. And the zombies were what made the original stick out from any other heist movie. So now it really has nothing to make it unique. So, is it like in a movie film where each one of us has a different skill set and it's only working together that we can pull off that which needs the pulling off? Yes, it's exactly like that. And also, like I said, the attempts to tie this into the zombie apocalypse also suck. This is a positive review, maybe I shouldn't have started with all the negatives. Anyway, I don't think it's as good as the original, but it's more consistent, and about half an hour shorter. I never really thought that this would be the next big thing for Netflix, and I still don't. Honestly, not even sure how many more of these I will see, but if you enjoyed the original, you may as well see this one. is reserved for patrons of drive-in theaters. But, 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 but it's I... a supply depot for all sorts of good things, which people can get at the snack bar, like soft drinks, delicious popcorn, and refreshing ice cream treats. But I am a patron of this drive-in. Well, why didn't you say so? Be our guest.
Well, that was longer than usual. Now this review is probably going to be more Army of Thieves than Last Night in Soho, directed by Edgar Wright, who also wrote the story while the actual screenplay was written by Christy Wilson Cairns, a writer for Penny Dreadful and 1917. I watched this on the day of Halloween. Gotta watch a horror movie then, in addition to it topping my most anticipated of the year list. What's more, this one had a scene that took place at a Halloween party. It's about a fashion student who moves into an old apartment in London, and when she sleeps in that apartment she has vivid dreams about the life of another woman in the 1960s played by Anya Taylor-Joy. Since she's obsessed with the 60s, she initially loves this, until it slowly gets more and more sinister. This admittedly starts out slow, but once the dreams come in it really starts to pick up. It has Wright's energetic style, even if it's toned down from some of his previous work. The 1960s set pieces look great, and they tell an interesting story of the seedier side of the glamorous nightlife. It goes from a nostalgic look at the era to a reminder that maybe it wasn't as good as you fantasize about. Even though this is a horror movie, the horror aspects don't really come in until maybe halfway through, and they are pretty effective and intense. It's basically like if Midnight in Paris turned into a ghost story and then into a Hitchcock film. Last Night in Soho takes some time to get going, but when it does, it's a great look at the past. I'm sorry I didn't have as much to say about it as I did with the other movie, but that's all I can think of. Go see it, it's great. Destination.